So hello everyone. This is the session for a portfolio in support of open science. We are the Kyoto University team for the research data management project. With us today are myself from ePortfolium, Shoji Kajida from Kyoto University, and uh, well, we have it mixed up there, and Jacques Reynaud from ePortfolium. We also have two colleagues. Uh, Toshihiko Iemori and Masahito Noze, who are both professors at Kyoto University and Nagoya University. Next slide. Today we're going to talk about research data management for open science and rubrics that can be created for research data management and how they can be used in the Karuda open source portfolio to support open science. Next slide. First, we'll talk about why uh, research data management is important in open science. Open science is a new, relatively new idea regarding extending the principles of openness to the whole research cycle. So the idea is that there would be sharing and collaboration in research as early as possible, allowing a different way to approach research and science and more collaboration across the world. Next slide. Science is evolving. There are many resources like the FAIR website that we cite above here that talk about the new expectations for publishing your research. Now the problem is that uh, existing researchers and new researchers are have been, been unfamiliar with the choices involved in this new way of seeing research. The expectations will be that uh, most, if not all, researchers will publish at least some of their data in support of their research results. Until now, they published their articles with their conclusions, and they referred to their data, but the actual data was not accessible. In order to do this, the, a person doing research needs to locate a suitable repository in which to put their data and make it available to others. This data needs to be licensed, and it needs, needs to be curated so that users can access it, understand it, and reuse it for their own research or just to understand the research of the person publishing it. This means there are choices for researchers. Which data is to be shared? Is it shareable? Uh, is there some reason to keep it private? Is there, uh, is there some reason why it would be good to share some of the data, but not all of the data. And then decide whether to share it in a proprietary repository or an open science repository. And there are many uh, contingencies in this, so making these decisions is quite important. Next slide. So how will the understanding of research data management skills improve research? First of all, uh, it will help a researcher become more systematic in identifying this, the data that is essential to his or her research project and creating a data management plan that allows that researcher, researcher to uh, have a clear path for obtaining data, analyzing data, and sharing data, whether through proprietary or open science repositories. Next, it will uh, research data management skills enrich the research process through planning, uh, as, as mentioned above, planning for how to acquire, process, and store the data, store it over the long term, sometimes huge amounts of data, and documenting future needs for that data. So how will the data be perceived over time? Does it need to be continuous into the future? Um, will old data make sense to new researchers, etc. Next slide. So um, to obtain meeting res meaningful results, we need to be sure that the correct data are prepared for analysis and the use the necessary software is available for that analysis. Sometimes the software is available in a proprietary world or open source world. And sometimes the individual researcher has to create their own software. This software also needs to be uh, somehow 
made available, otherwise the data in the repository is not usable. Finally, uh, the research data management skills guide the sharing of data for reuse by others. Um, so there, there are conditions for publishing the data, making decisions about that, and as I mentioned, uh, the need to curate the data for transparency and usability. Luckily, some of the repositories provide assistance in curating that data and uh, making sure that it's uh, usable to others. Next slide. So we're going to talk about the use of research re rubrics in research data management. So what is a rubric? Well, most people in the open source world have seen at least one of them. Um, one of my colleagues put a little uh, a meme, uh, maybe it's called a meme, up there in the corner. It's not a rubrics cube, which is actually spelled differently. But in my sense, a rubric is a chart or a map that describes the progression for learning the skills and the achievements it contains. In other words, it lays out exactly what is to be learned and understood in order to perform the activities described by the rubric. It also provides a step-by-step -step process to teach those skills and achievements and a means to, to evaluate the mastery of those skills and achievements. So it, a rubric assists the learner, assists the teacher, and assists the evaluator in understanding how and when and why to um, use research data management skills. Next slide. Effective rubrics point to specific learning outcomes, and the word specific is important here, nailing down exactly what it is to be learned and offering a measurable description of that learning in each cell of the rubric. And effective rubrics require many redrafts and review by potential users in order to be completely usable for your purpose. Next slide. Here's a rubric that was uh, formulated by the California Digital Library. And it is a rubric that describes the decision-making process that um, researchers need to do in terms of how and when and, and why to share their data. So you'll see across the top are um, um, categories of decision-making, ad hoc, one time, more active and more comprehensive, and then steps toward deciding about how to share your data. This is a very useful rubric, but it will not teach research data management skills to the new researcher. So we decided to, we in our project decided to create our own rubrics. And next slide. Jock, next slide. Thank you. Um, the, rubrics, the, the rubrics that we came up with with actually come in four parts. We decided to decide to divide them into planning, organizing, analyzing, and sharing data. So when the, the new researcher is planning for their research, that's when they create a data management plan using the first rubric. And then they you can use the second rubric to think about how to organize their data in preparation for analysis. The third rubric how to analyze their data, and the fourth rubric for how to share or publish their data. And here we're using sharing in the open science idea and publishing in the proprietary sense. Next. So here's our first rubric, the planning for data rubric. Um, it has stages of achievement across the top. So we're looking at beginning skills, developing skills, improving skills, and completed skills. So when a new researcher finishes the row of the rubric, they can be said to have completed that uh, aspect of, of data management. The uh, vertical line, the, so the horizontal rows, um, describe dimensions for uh, our, our work. And uh, here we have data to be obtained, methodology for obtaining data, team members, and funding. 
So in a way, this is a way for researchers to, to plan out all the logistics of their research, including who will help them and how it will be funded and what will they do to actually get the data. Next slide. And here we're talking about um, organizing data. So the, the horizontal, the vertical columns are the same implying steps toward completion of the of the experience and the vertic the horizontal rules uh, horizontal rows include collecting the data storing the data data creating formats for the files version control of the data meaning how does the data could uh, change over time and backing up the data next slide in our rubric for analyzing the data, we cover software for analysis, whether that's existing software or software created by the researcher, means of processing the data, intermediate data, which refers to data that arises after analyzing initial data and um, data that may need to be preserved as we um, move toward the final version of the data. And finally, data cleaning. And the last slide is about sharing or publishing the data. So we mentioned licensing, data needs to be licensed. Um, very important is following a metadata schema for the data. There's always questions of data completeness, validity, reliability, and importantly, ethics. And finally, how exactly will the data be shared or published? So this, um, these four rubrics were created mostly by um, our two professors in the earth and space science field in our project. Um, um, and they believe that this is a pretty comprehensive picture of how one acquires, uh, analyzes, and publishes data for a research project. Next slide. The next steps for our RDM rubrics are to create rubrics for other disciplines. The social science rubric is in process. We're going to be working on biological science and other disciplines. And we're fortunate in understanding that um, the rubrics you've seen for material, material science cover more than earth and space science. And maybe with a little bit more uh, piloting and revision, will be fully adequate for the, the material or physical sciences. We hope the same will happen in social science and biological science. We're not, very, we're not clear yet about whether there are other categories, other disciplines, but we do know that we need an interdisciplinary set of rubrics. We then need to pilot the rubrics and revise them so that they're in tip-top shape and then use them with an e-portfolio to prepare graduate and undergraduate students and postdocs for success with, the research, with their research data management. Next, I'm going to explain, next slide, I'm going to say a little bit about the vehicle for uh, providing that portfolio, the Karuta Open Source Portfolio. Karuta e-portfolios capture processes for learning, assessment, and showcasing. And in this case, there will be learning. The researchers will learn how to manage their data. There will be assessment in that uh, the instructor for the program or short course will uh, evaluate as well as the researchers themselves will evaluate how they're doing. And there could be a potential for showcasing in the future. Right now, we're not doing that. Um, these uh, portfolios are customizable, so we plan to distribute the portfolio to other universities who, who may want to do uh, the same kind of training. This is done via a template that can be used in a new version, a new uh, implementation of Karuta. Uh, we'll be using the rubrics, dashboards, and reports to make the portfolio comprehensible and usable. And in a minute, Jacques will explain how that's to be done. I mentioned already templates for sharing across institutions. And we already have a, a great start with an international community in Canada, France, Japan, Belgium, and the USA, all using Karuta in different ways, and possibly acquiring some of these research data management rubrics through the Karuta ePortfolio. 
Jacques, would you like to explain how we're going to put the rubrics into a portfolio? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, good. I uh, wasn't sure my mic was on. Okay. Uh, this is a nice, very nice challenge for the Karuta open source software because uh, we have to sort of help this step-by-step -step learning process uh, guided by these rubrics. And it's uh, completely new and uh, interesting. And of course, participants will have to sort of upload evidence, self-evaluate their skills, integrate the rubric as well. And eventually, and this is a very strategic part, is the instructor will have eventually to assess or what uh, participants have done and uh, and, uh, and to sort of uh, give some uh, a final evaluation of the uh, student's work. So uh, this is really the challenge that we like in, with Karuta because Karuta is very flexible and it tries to adapt to sort of uh, to, to, to sort of help out in this process. So this is uh, the, for the welcome page, and uh, just to advertise that Karuta 3.0 is a very, very flexible uh, uh, UI now, so you can pretty much uh, uh, present uh, images, uh, all sorts of uh, information in a sort of very efficient way, very pleasant way. So students will have access to these rubrics somehow, in a sort of more uh, tabular form so they can sort of start thinking about their work but uh, in their portfolio that we see in the right hand side uh, there will be uh, i don't know if you see my uh, uh, there will be uh, of course a welcome page a dashboard that i will show and phases and so uh, students will have to sort of uh, pick the phases and the different dimensions that uh, Janice uh, talk about, like the planning for data. Well, yeah, there is uh, data to be obtained and everything uh, will follow. So it, it's, uh, it's very easy to sort of select. And, uh, and then uh, for the, the participant will have to sort of uh, submit evidence for each of these uh, phases and component or elements of the different phases. So there will be uh, here uh, a sort of evidence section and a menu here where a participant, the, the, the graduate student can add text, document, URL images. And when they do that, they can sort of relate that to the, uh, the, the, the self-evaluation uh, levels like beginning, uh, developing, uh, mastery, and everything. So they do that here. So every time students uh, post evidence, they have to think about to, to what level this evidence is sort of uh, related. So, and then they have to, to provide some kind of self-evaluation. Here we just show, uh, whoops, uh, the beginning uh, evaluation. But uh, I'm sorry. Uh, the the participant will will have to sort of uh, uh, specify for each of the level, beginning, uh, uh, intermediate, and whatever. They will have to say if they sort of uh, uh, fill the. Inf they they think that they sort of uh, uh, they uh, respect the, the this this level by uh, having a status yes or no and having a date, and that's, that will be very uh, important for the uh, for the instructor because he, the instructor could see the progression because these rubrics are really dynamic. Uh, uh, a young researcher will start with beginning and move on to the to, until he's he's got to the mastery level. So this is what this is a sort of instructor uh, dashboard uh, that, uh, for example, planning for data here. There will be all the different component of planning for data, and an instructor will be able to see how many evidence have been uploaded, 
they will be able to see if there's uh, the students thinks that uh, yes he, he's attained the beginning status or yes he's more he's got the improving or eventually yes he's got the completed status and at the end we don't show that here but the instructor will be able to sort of uh, there will be a, a way for the instructor to just click there and to sort of assess what the student has done so this is uh, the part that I was uh, that was really important about making it easy for instructor or faculty to sort of uh, see the progress of students and make a, a sort of a final final evaluation. So this dashboard is really key. It's a, it's a very big improvement in Karuta, uh, in the sense that you can present relevant information to the instructor in a very efficient way. Uh, I don't know if you want me to continue, Janice, but uh, of course, the, as any Karuta project, the idea is to prototype. So we're going to test this portfolio, uh, seek uh, volunteer students, faculty, get their feedback and see what parts are, you know, can be improved, are too difficult or not very clear enough. And we'll eventually be able to apply this portfolio to other areas and other graduate student. Uh, Janice, you want to conclude? Yes, yeah, so we see this project as a very useful way to combine current um, tools in the open source world with current needs in the open source world. Researchers need to be, learn to uh, accept and work with new expectations about publishing their data. And open source tools, whether they be rubrics or portfolios, as in the CRUDA open source portfolio, are available to structure the training that uh, re new researchers need to have in order to succeed in the new context of open science. Are there any questions or comments? Everyone should be able to unmute or to place your questions in the public chat. Any questions for uh, for Janice and, and Jacqueline, we also do have uh, Shoji present. It looks like maybe not. If that's the case, I'm going to stop the recording.